On this episode of Life at Eight Knots, we unexpectedly find ourselves in the Dominican Republic, where we venture to land for a much needed break with beers and camaraderie on the menu, as well as waterfalls and beautiful scenery. But we hit a snag, checking out. The captain will fill you in. We're the Cognitos. We purchased a sailing catamaran named Lost Cat to be our home at sea. And now we run a chartering business where we show couples the ropes and hard truths of living a life aboard. Our goal is to help you move from dreamer to doer. Get to know us here on YouTube and join us for a real life sailing adventure to see if you've got what it takes to live a life at eight knots. Now that we have repairs completed, well, for now, and we had a beautiful dive on the stairway there in uh, Provo, we headed on our new course across the Caicos Bank and directly to Dominican Republic. We we're close hauled, six foot seas, 20 to 30 knots of wind, making 10 knots. Uh, we made an overnight passage to the island of Hispaniola, right on the border of Dominican Republic and Haiti, to start our new adventure, the Thornless Path. All right, we made it to Dominican Republic. We were planning on doing an outside route to St. Thomas, but the weather is not cooperating, so we'll take what we can get. And what we get is beat up. So we're trying to make a charter date and uh, it is uh, being difficult, but it is beautiful. I haven't seen a mountain in a long time. Never thought we'd be at the Dominican Republic at all. There you know we're near it. We'll see if we can just take safe harbor every day. So the trade winds pick up at 8.30, I just found out. I was like, nah, that can't be, yep. So turn back around, go hide behind this big old rock until four in the morning where we'll start motoring. There's like a, like a calm that comes over the island on like 10 miles out all the way around the island. So we'll take that advantage of that and motor up. Uh, and we got the Mona Passage coming up. We got to time that just right. Uh, lots of planning. And I hadn't planned on this route, so. We've been reading Passage of South. It's a must have. Check out the dude on the cover. <laughs> Bruce Van Sant. Bruce Van Sant. So people swear by this book and I can see why. I was trying to muscle through it. Muscle through it, broke my boat. Dive deck's all messed up again. I already fixed it once. Fixed it so good, something else broke on it. check in so we go walk around town since we have all day every day to do stuff with these little towns all along here. We made landfall at the Dominican Republic at Monte Cristi Bay. We anchored up for the day, let the winds blow themselves out, and departed early the next morning. After early morning motor up the coast of the Dominican Republic, we arrived at Punta Castillo. There is no customs house here, so we uh, came ashore in search of good food and cold beer. While the boys enjoyed cigars and beers, I enjoyed a quiet stroll along the beach.
By the time I made it back, the boys were hungry and ready for some lunch. But not just any lunch. I think you can tell from the look on Ryan's face that this is not where we're going to be having lunch. We found ourselves a spot right near Lost Cat, and wouldn't you know it, they had cats too. I can build this. We're gonna have the big Dominican lunch. First, we start with Presidente Pequeños. I don't know what the big beers are, but the Pequeños beers. We got Pascalo, De Fresca. Papa Frita, arroz, the beans, y camarones, coco chasco y coco chasco, y plantenas, delicioso. Oh, y salsa pequeña, salsa pequeña, the big Dominican lunch. With me, Big Papi. After a fun lunch, we decided to walk back to our dinghy and take in a little history of Hispaniola. This was the first Spanish establishment here in Island of Hispaniola. When Christopher Columbus returned in 1493, he moved his coastal base of operations to what is now the Dominican Republic and established the settlement of La Isabella, named after the Spanish queen. We departed our anchorage at 2.30 in the morning to arrive at Ocean World Marina at 7 a.m. We decided we're going to take a day off and explore the island. But first, you got to check in with the Navy. After that, we were able to get a dock and continue our check-in process. Here is the copies or Gato Pardido. Pardido. It's not good for the cat. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> oh, yeah, the crew at Ocean World Marina were super helpful, super friendly. Heck, even the custom guy came down on his day off, brought us barbecue so that we could get checked in. Uh, customs and immigration are right there in the marina. This marina is more for larger yachts, as you can see, with the big concrete piers, and it is surgy, so get out your big fenders. But wasn't crowded, wasn't too expensive, and after nine days of constant travel, it was nice to tie up to the pier and have a good night's sleep. Good morning. Good morning. Anybody want espresso? <laughs> Me? I don't know. I do. Being at the dock has its privileges. I actually slept a little bit. I only got up twice to check the lines. Huh? What are we doing today, Ryan? We're gonna go for some waterfalls. Oh my! Twelve. Goodness. Twelve waterfalls. We gotta Twelve. count them, or else we get our money back. Good. And you didn't think we were gonna have any fun in the Dominican <laughs> Republic? You know you run a tight ship, so. Oh man, I had to give these guys a break, and the boat a break. So that's our day today. So here we go. Over the river, through the woods, through the waterfalls we go. Heard of. There we 
go. Coming close to the land. We're gonna get swept over the water. <laughs> I think the helmet's gonna be fine. It'll be fine. It's a high one. This was the tallest waterfall in the park, and James was the first to jump. Or does he take the ladder? Let's see. You ready? You ready for this? We survived. Kick it out. One, two, three. After an amazingly fun day of chasing waterfalls, it was time for the Lost Cat crew to head back to the city, where we snagged our final lunch at Chris and Maddie's, an amazing place to grab a lobster dinner. If you ever find yourself in this part of the world, definitely check them out. Ah, we're back. Okay, checking out of the Dominican Republic. Checking in was very easy. Ocean World Marina made it very easy. It was $135 to check the boat in, $12.50 per person for a two day stay. I was like, that's great. Dockage came to $332. The most expensive thing was laundry at $38 for laundry for the tokens. Someone did small loads. Uh, <laughs> that's not true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Checking out. We have to do it before 5 p.m. Talk to them, I'm gonna leave. I said, I told them I'm gonna leave at midnight. They're like, well, you gotta check with the Navy. I said, okay, whatever. So, checked it out. Both of them charged me $20 US, no receipt. So very nice checking in, but you pay for it checking out. I don't believe that is a official fee. So, hit the ATM again. It's not too bad. They're still very nice. Uh, Customs brought, brought us barbecue on Sunday, so that was cool. Um, problem, I was gonna leave at midnight. Our travel here in the Dominican Republic is at night. From early morning to late morning is when we travel. We cannot leave this harbor between the hours of 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. Prime traveling time. I had a 40 mile motor planned Tomorrow we'll go 12, so it's a full day loss. Oh, we get to anchor in Porta Plata probably if all things stay the same the way the wind's been blowing. We're only gonna get like 12 miles up at 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. So no rush, we're not leaving tonight at midnight. Tomorrow at 6 a.m., so it'll be up 5.30. Navy will be aboard to okay us to leave. We just gotta get back across Mona Passes before Friday. Saturday is we have to hide on the west coast of Puerto Rico. Next time, 
on Life at Eight Knots. We get off the dock, but not before paying one final fee. Locate a beautiful anchorage where we stop to plan our trip through the Mona Passage on our way to Puerto Rico. See you next time.